I don't know. It's all gone wrong. It's all broken. It's all broken. Terry's broke it. Terry? He's knacked it. <laughs> <laughs> well, Shane, Shane thought he was going to win there because he only one playing. All oh, right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. He wishes. He wishes. Um, well, I'll tell you what. Look, let's go to the famous red couch uh, with Eddie Dial, everyone. Let's give him a round of applause. <laughs> Live on the big, big show this Sunday evening. Uh, how are you doing, Eddie? How you doing, mate? Yeah, I'm not bothering. The nerves seem to have gone a bit nice. I, I, so, yeah. I would hope so. I yeah. would hope so. Yeah, yeah. I would hope so, mate. So we're gonna we're gonna go deep, aren't we, into a yeah. conversation right now? Yeah. Um, there's a lot to talk about. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Um, let's talk about the boxing first, if we can. Uh, so local boxer. Yeah. Yeah. Um, tell us how that kind of got started. How did you get in, into that? Um, it was like I think it was. I think it was around about a year, year ago, year and a half ago. Um. I, I'll say a bad place. I've been, I've been in many bad places. Say, um, I think at the time, um, it was, it was coming to the conclusion of being a bad place. There was a lot of things that was, yeah, happening and um, taking place, and me, me mindset, um, not really being there. So anyway, that kind of, kind of, um, I was doing things to uh, cope with things and block things out, um, and not really having, like, me mother, me mother and father, and obviously other key figures in your life at that time. It didn't really kind of help. So to cut long story short, I was quite inspired by Conor McGregor. This was just going back about two years ago. There's a documentary on YouTube. Mm. Um, and towards the end of the documentary, it says from nothing to something to everything. And I seen Darren, uh, Darren Tindall's uh, his boxing shows and they always used to get shared and all that. And I thought, well, actually, I, I want to be part of that. And I always thought I could look after myself to a certain extent. But look, it's a game changer when you're doing it in front of everybody. So I kind of replied to the Conor McGregor thing. I was in like a really bad place mentally. To be honest, it was it was that deep to the point where I didn't really want to be here anymore. If if um if that was the case, so it was like a quote. It says like it's seen like enough, nothing to something to everything. So I kind of just was at work one day and I thought, you know what it is? I'm just gonna get some big balls here. And I thought I'm gonna message him. And I thought well, once I message him, I kind of take it back from that moment in time. Yeah. So yeah, uh, I, I just I sent the message out and that was it. The rest was history. Yeah, uh, he got us matched up and um, I I started training. Tying in with that, uh, I've been diagnosed with PTSD. So. When I, when I fight, this goes back obviously being younger. Um, when, every time I come to fight or approach a fight, my first um, approach is I think I'm going to die. And then that sounds a bit um, surreal. And that ties into what happened as a child and obviously yeah, growing up and being bullied and whatever happened. So I, I kind of like fight like a bit like a caged animal and a bit of a thingy there. Of many lads, uh, as he's a watcher, now if any is a watching, you'll all know yourselves uh, on the fights that I have. I've, I, I kick out for some reason. It's a boxing fight and I end up kicking out. I just lose, I lose me. Um, I lose me cool. Mm. Yeah. But do you win? Oh, I did, <laughs> I, yes, I did win there. Yeah. <laughs> That's the most important thing. Yeah, does, does James, if you're watching now, mate, yeah. Yeah, I remember, I remember he'd be back in the corner. I was a bit scared at the time. I didn't really, um, I didn't, oh, I didn't really fight that, uh, the way I should have done really that time. How, but anyways, it was the first time and I took a lot, I did, I got the win, but uh, I was on the back foot, he back isn't the corner and really you, you should be spinning off or like just to try to jab out and try to get out of it. But when, you, when you're under that pressure and you, 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 everything's new to you, you kind of like forget. So I kind of like kicked the, uh, kicked the, kicked that to, to get to get out the corner. The corner men seen it. I don't think Gary, Gary, Gary Furby was the one there uh, refing at the time. I don't, I don't think he noticed it. You know, it's like the little uh, fisty cuff thing. Then uh, went, I went to Scotland. Yeah. Uh, and I kind of, I didn't really want to finish finish the lad. When I, when I was when I was I was fighting well, I got to round two. So Darren's in my corner. Darren says, "Look, you're going to finish him here. Yeah, it's time to finish him." So I was like, "Finish him." I said, like, "I don't really want to hurt anybody." And I've never really been that, even though I've been fighting. I was like, "Finish him." So I'm kind of like looking at his corner, just hide the towel in. You know what I mean? Like I just don't want to finish the guy. So anyways, I goes to finish the guy, and I'm running across the ring. And I'm trying to kick out of him again at the same time. So even on the front foot or the back foot, um. Yeah, these these kicks seem to come and something. I think I might take a bit of kickboxing. I was going to say you could you could <laughs> almost go into U, UFC, can you? Yeah, that's you, it. Well, that's that would be it, the way yeah. to go, and yeah. then you can kind of do what you want. Then, can't you? Yeah, in the cage. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> so, have, have you ever attended the, the kind of UFC stuff? Um, I, be... Yeah, I went um, SBG for a little while in um, in in South Shields, but I kind of like with me. I'm kind of all or nothing. Everything's sporadic. Everything just seems to happen. with a bit of madness. Mm. So even though I was doing the boxing, I was going to that SPG at the same time. And I was like, kind of like wanting to be 
with this, this guy, this guy, this guy at the same time. They're kind of like distractors. And someone gets a bit of advice, I think you should just be concentrating on the boxing, which really, if you're going to be coming on a boxing the fight, you should all, you should just be applying yourself to whatever you want to do because that's the only way you're going to progress and give the best account of yourself. Yeah. So I kind of made the decision like to pull to pull a pull away from it. And then the uh, the, the 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 wrestling, the jiu-jitsu, I was kind of um uh, I'm not embracing it because you meant to go through the motions and the in the locks and stuff. And I do, and I, and I, me, I, I don't like getting beat off nobody at anything. So I was kind of like I didn't I didn't I cut like the learning process away. So I, I was like be, um, I just want to always be in the jujitsu where you drop someone on your back. I want to be that guy that won all the time. Mm. So I kind of like it stopped me progress within it. So I think um, it'll definitely be something I'll be looking forward in the future. But just to apply a different mindset and certainly not when the, the boxing's um, mm. going on. Mm. I think, yeah, you know, in terms of professional boxing, you know, people use that, you know, there's a technical ability there. Obviously, there's definitely fitness, you know, yeah, yeah. That's, that's key to everything. Um, you mentioned before you fight kind of where well, you're throwing everything at it. Is that an anger thing? Are you, do you drop some of the technical stuff and it's all about this? This is a job that needs to be done and you go in all, all guns blazing. What's yeah, your approach kinda, to it? Kind of, yeah. The, um, you, you, you're totally right. I think I didn't, I didn't even actually think about what you've just said there, but you're probably kind of right. There's probably is a little bit of anger there. Mm. I think it, in, in a sense, it's like, it's like writing, obviously you, you go through everything that I've been through. Uh, there was kind of like some happening in the background of this, and there was like somebody that was um, that was a fighting a fighting lad himself, and uh, so it, it, um, it was kind of I felt insecure in myself. I felt like I had a point to prove, so it was kind of like done in the sense for the wrong reasons, but like putting me demons to bed at the same time. So that's kind of why I, why I got into it um, because, like I say, things things got a bit surreal and a bit messed up. And I, I mean, there was when I say dark days, I mean like. Um, I mean, like really, really dark days in terms of uh, my mental health. So, yeah, um, yeah. Okay. Talking about dark days, um, can you take us to one of these dark days? What, what when you, when you talk about these dark days, what is a, a what is that for you? What what was it? You know, what's what's it been for you? Um, for me, I mean, we can all relate. I mean, um, society um, in general, with, with my coping mechanisms, it would obviously all, all, always come with like alcohol and drugs. And when when when, when um, drugs were involved, I mean, you weren't. I mean, people obviously sit there and they see like the lads and that you have any bit of banter, you have, you have your couple of packets and stuff, or you're doing whatever else. For me, um, it's not really something that I'm obviously proud of seeing, and, and I'll come out of it. You, you're talking more like 20 gram plus, it's to the point where obviously you're blocking things out that much where you shouldn't really be waking up. When you take when you take and when you take them that amount of gear, it's not really been something where I've been in my early twenties when I do it with a younger lad. Where I was doing, it, I enjoyed it back then because you know, like you, you've grown up, you're experiencing yeah. things, you go on holiday. But for this, it was just mainly a coping mechanism. And for me, technically, because maybe it didn't have the bottle to um to uh, to end it in a sense. So kind of like if I did that, that was going to do the job first. So it was more like a like that like that thing. So I like. That's why I tried. Obviously, that's when I went to the boxing. And that's where the boxing um, saves lives. And obviously, uh, was it Donald Wheatley? Shout out Donald Wheatley as well. The inspiring story last week in um, the Chronicle. We, I can believe you're very similarly there because I've been as many times. I've never been to prison myself. Um, I'm very fortunate enough not to not to go there. But um, yeah, um, pretty dark. You, you know, you like you know yourself. You, if you're taking like twenty gram, you should not be waking up. Mm. It's serious. I mean, and it's some of this kind of you know we talk about peer pressure we talk about hanging around with the wrong crowd was it was there a little bit of that the, i mean early, in the early days yeah i mean obviously um, if, if, if you would have to go back in time there from being like a, a young lad i didn't really have like the guidance that we are that we are would me my stepfather had a bit of an alcohol problem um, and his behavior towards me was a bit not right so i didn't really have that then my mom obviously had to provide for like five kids and stuff. So there wasn't really a lot of money there. So I was a target for bullying in school. I always look good. I've always, I know, like, I don't mean to come across that. I've got many people, no. but, but I've always been a good looking lad. But even though I had, I had been that here, uh, like I was just dressed like, uh, like a bit like a scruff, you know, in a sense. So it made us a target for bullying. So I was getting bullied in the home, bullied uh, at school, and then bullied when I wanted to play out, play out on a night time. So, um, uh, so when I mean, you get, I got to about twelve thirty. I moved from South Shields, and um, so so I, when I moved to Washington, I've had like a bit of a George accent, which is isolated is even more so um, at that moment in time. So I kind of like at that moment felt like I had to prove to everybody who I was, and like look at me, I'm the I'm like the dick, you know. Excuse the language, sorry. Um, like look at me, I have to like the classroom clown in a sense. So I, I kind of started becoming someone I wasn't. I had to be like these guys to survive. 
and then eventually I started getting involved with like certain people um, and then I started getting an identity and I was doing it within myself now although I was doing bad things it felt great the adrenaline was second to none and then not only that I felt wanted for the first time in my life where I'd never felt that before so that's kind of how I end up like going down to like the life of crime route and mm. what you've just been tying into yeah. what you've just been seeing there. You mentioned, you mentioned going down that life of crime. I mean, that that's a journey and a pitfall that lots of people find them going down. And a lot of that is financial reasons, you know, yeah. if, if they've you know lost a job or whatever, and you know, they're, 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 you know, it's almost, it's a need must. What was the reason for you dropping into that kind of life of crime? Like that's like, that's, that's, that's pretty much, the day of time back into it was like that you see it was an identity it was an identity thing i think it, uh, many people in relate to it i mean there's a select few kids what will go out pri privileged kids that come from middle class or like your higher class and they come to school you, you do get the odd few of them that will tie into that but generally it's from like the, the, like the lads that's come from your, your, your tough estates where you, you're doing anything to fight and survive and opportunities are few and far between so and then you kind of there's a bit of peer pressure going on there as well because you're all maybe having an element of that going on or even one story could be bad for one person, but one story might not be as bad, but there's an element of all tying in, tying in each other. So mm -hmm. I think that's, um, yeah, that, that, that's pretty much, yeah. Mm. So how old are you now, Eddie? I'm 29. 29. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about the, you know, uh, almost like a timeline, if you like, from, from being a youngster, you know, I don't know, 14, 15, um what were the markers you know at what age point did you go into crime what age point did you want to turn yeah, your life yeah. around the, the crime the life of crime actually yeah, i wouldn't say a life of crime because you're going back to like petty crime but yeah you're talking me me grandma was probably the, the most influential person it's the only person i felt unconditional love from uh, uh growing up and he died from 14 i was 10 and he served um served for the army in the great wars on the hms uh emerald so it's really nice to have this opportunity that you take to give him that day um, that respect because yeah yeah um so yeah uh, could you could you repeat that because i've kind of went blank there yeah just just in terms of like you know oh, as yes, a kid yeah. and it almost yeah. like the markers so, so almost yeah. like i was this age when that happened yeah. and up to up to your 29 now yeah yeah so um so it was like i said i was about, I was about six year old uh, i was seven year old so because I didn't get now, my mom, my mom uh, took us in there, took when the when the paper shop, and I was going to my granddad's that day, didn't I? So I've only uh, I went I had a bomber jacket on, <laughs> so I've only with deep pockets. So there was cream eggs like just standing there next to us. So I've kind of just I had these box of cream eggs. My hasn't been looking. Nobody in the shop's been looking. Right. So that was kind of like where the life of crime started. Right, right. I'm getting now. I'm going to take them. So it actually started with cream eggs. Cream eggs. Is that what you're yeah, saying? Yeah, like cream eggs. <laughs> and did you, I've got to ask you this? Was it the box of cream eggs, the mini no, box, they, they or were the individual they're, they're, individuals? They're, yeah. Were they the individual eggs? Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 And did you eat them afterwards? <laughs> did so you? This, this is where it gets oh, better. Oh, go on. Because then. of the, my, my, the type of mom my granda was, very high moral to him, a person. I mean, you yeah. 77, you're still cleaning home, like really, like anything of that, like the old fashioned, like, like you, you can you can imagine your points of to it. I got to the house, my granda's. Yeah, yeah, and he wanted to, um, he went, what's that? Um, somebody said, I can't really remember who said, what's that in your jacket, son? So, bush, big ball, big bulge in my bomber jacket, you know, like yeah. on the left, and I went, nothing, <laughs> as you do. And, uh, yeah. and then, yeah, I kind of like, obviously, got, you know, I wouldn't say the terms force, but I kind of like, you open your jacket, son. So, I open my jacket, and I'm pulling out these cream eggs, there's only about 12. He says, yeah. you know, and my granddad went, you know what I'm doing with them, son? Put them in the bin. And he made us put everyone in the bin, didn't he? Didn't let me, didn't, didn't let us eat them. I was gutted. Did you get? Did you manage to eat one on the way none, home or not? No. None. Because <laughs> I didn't want to show my mom. Obviously, I was, I was, I'd want to give the game away. It was more like a bedroom job for the yeah, night time. Yeah, you know? yeah. <laughs> so it started with cream eggs. What What did it end on? What What was the worst? The worst thing that ever happened when it came to um, you know, stealing something? I, I can't really. I can't really um, go completely no. in, 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 into the thing for no, no. Um, legal yeah. reasons. Um, but I was arrested for something. Um, yeah at one time they, to be honest with you it was all my friends my friends got his house got raided. he got his door sent in uh james you're rough you know you know the score uh, yeah he got his door sent in um so like yeah if i can't remember those songs those sunk a doubt do it in anyways so we were just young and daft right so we kind of like actually we pulled we pulled the wood off his door so we kind of like had a party in party in his house but we'd done something a few nights previously hmm. to that so anyways we, we got we got arrested in the house that time and when we got arrested i thought nah this is it this is it you're talking double figures here because they're gonna what's gonna happen is gonna link us to this or whatever else the case was pretty a pretty a pretty deep uh case so i, I don't know um 
without going into it, I thought like that was gonna be that was gonna be it, and that was gonna be the time. Uh, there was like other occasions, I mean, here um, which was pretty big, and I've been fortunate enough. I kind of like because of the impulsiveness and because of that attitude, I kind of like put my car into um Salon 2000, which I do apologize. It was quite um yeah, behavior that's not right and it affected your business. And I know it obviously um it caused 20 grand's worth of damage to your business. You did claim on insurance, but nevertheless, that was my responsibility to as a man. You can now see the reasons why I done it, so I do apologize for that. But um yeah, like that's um just crazy. I was running running pizza shops with um uh you know, as, as you know, and just obviously just doing whatever here um, and a little bit more organized. People say, Oh, we've done this, we've done that. I mean, have you have you really done that? Because not about with an older fella that really knew the score. Mm -hmm. So things got a little bit organized. They would we'll pull up against the side of the road, you know, them big um your big lighting towers, them big generators about the yeah. size of this. You're talking about 15 grand's worth of equipment. We'll just put the other uh, the other whatever you know, the other lights would be put on and whatever else and would be dressed up and it would be very sophisticated how it would, how it would go on and happen. And this was like at 16 year old. This wow. So wow. And so you're 29 now. When did you put the crime behind you? When did you say right enough is enough? What, how old were you when that happened? In terms of in terms of that, I mean, there's always some sort of involvement in that life. But in terms of um, like that, that 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 level of things, where like yeah, I would say I was 20, 21 was the start of the process, and that was me for the birth of my daughter. At that time, a lot of people don't know about it. I, I, because the car crash was in there. Me, me partner was obviously the, the, she um, obviously she she found out she was pregnant. So I thought at this time, look, I'm going to prison. Yeah. So I kind of like camped out and she was only young at the time. I mean, she, I, I apologize to my friends when your friends are watching because you don't know this. Uh, but she kind of like came to the tempers and I'm like talking about, I'm like, no way, what I'm wanting to go to prison. That was really the moment where it got a bit surreal for me because I thought, well, my daughter's going up and I, relating to the men that I had in my life, I thought I don't actually want to be. So that was like the start of the process. But because I'd been involved in things for so long and done that much things, nothing gave us the adrenaline like that did. So I kind of like lost my identity from that moment in time. Everything that I wanted to be from such like of being young or had been manipulated in a sense to become, I kind of like had to put it put it to bed. But then there was nothing going to give you that that level of that level of adrenaline, that level of thrill. So I kind of like lost myself in the process, which obviously ties in yet again like the the, the drug use and yeah. the things like just trying to cope because at that moment in time. I'm nobody now. Like I am. Um, like, so you, you, you mentioned drug use and stuff. Um, obviously, you were looking for that kind of high. You're looking for, yeah. you know, as you mentioned, yeah, uh, yeah. you know, you, a bit of escapism, I guess, in, yeah. in, in a way or a sense, um, you know, and a sense of belonging amongst yeah. you know, fellow friends or, or whatever. Um, at what point did you decide you were going to put that behind you? Um. It can still it can still crop up in in, mm. in a sense. Um, mm. I mean, obviously, you have got to understand the society's changed in general. And there, yeah. there, there's there's drinking, and there's 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 drugs, there's there's, yeah. there's drugs about you war war and all that. But I suppose that you know, like if you're going out, if you're going out with the lads, um, you know, if you're doing it in moderation, or you're going out for a few drinks, there's nothing wrong with that. Or you're going like that. It's when it's when it's becoming a problem. It's when it's not enjoying it anymore. When yeah. it's when it's when like that. You've got to be able to identify within yeah. yourself where it's becoming it's becoming a problem. Because let, let's be honest, even if you just relate really the cannabis smoking, I mean, how many people these days are actually smoking cannabis? You're talking you, you, the the percentages are going to be pretty high. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's when so I think it's massively part of society these days, and even alcohol tying into alcohol. For me, my belief. Uh, on alcohol which without obviously coming across that's probably been the the it's illegal it's legal and it's and mm. you know what it is i've had an experience of that ruining my family and being on the back end of that and yet so it's part of so i understand the life and understand what people's don't like mm. so look you've got to do what you've got to do and i completely get it so without going into too much so it could be that, it's almost less about what you know it's almost less about the substance as such but it's more about the control the control of that so i guess too much of anything you know if you had somebody that just loved to shove cream cakes in i love that you know I mean? we all like, like a cream pop. cake yes uh but if you had 50 a day yeah. that's gonna have an impact on yes. your health oh. and if you're having 50 a day and you're not speaking to members of your family in the house while you're doing it then that has a social impact on other people around yes. you and i guess whether it's drugs or whether it's alcohol whatever the addiction may be um you know that that can be a big problem and it's how you know in terms of these you know taking it to that extreme where yeah. it becomes a problem yeah is that only recognized when other people um are affected when you see how it's that can hurt others or 
it's 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 more my mental health. I've never really had an addiction in a sense where it's been the need of every day. It's ne it's never been like that. It's just been where I don't know what it is because of the PT the PTSD because of obviously this lack of adrenaline, whatever else. I've just needed that 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 release because the thing is so when so when I've done it, that's just when it's been like pretty heavy. Yeah. And you know yourself is because um. The see, the see, obviously, if if someone drinks moderate every day, it doesn't really have an effect of is the binge on a sense. Yeah. So I've never really had like the, an an addiction of 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 any sort ever in my life. I would never allow myself to because of obviously the the role models I had in my life and because of that addiction, what that happened. But nevertheless, it's heavy and it can kill you. you there's, there's no, I don't even know how. To be honest with you, I don't even know how I'm still alive. There's been many other things that probably would not be able to have. You probably not have the time to cover the night. But there's been loads of different stories, whether that's been accidents, whether that's been car crashes, whether that's been getting hit with weapons or fighting, or there's there's loads of different things. Other other, so I'm I'm quite fortunate, and I've tied that back into my grand. I think my grand is um my grand is spirits probably kept us alive. Mm. Is it is your granddad? Is he kind of your hero, if you like? Yeah, if there, yeah. If there was going to be a super a superhero, yeah, it'd be, mm. um, it would be him. Mm. I suppose it's always nice if. Well, I say nice, but like if if you're on a downer, if you're in that place, if you're in that dark place, you need something to grab onto, don't you? To be honest with you, and I'm gonna I'm gonna inspire people because there's not yeah. there's not a lot of people that do it. When I'm sitting there, I'm crying, I'm crying, I'm crying like and I've, I've cried like a big baby. To be honest with you, mm. if that if that's it, I, I don't I'm not scared. I'm not gonna run away from any man, and any any man wants to judge us why you know what to do. Yeah. Um. So, but um, yeah, I would I would cry I would I would cry like a big baby when it was like that, and he he would be the name. He he would he would be the name that would come to my head, and I'd be like, I go and like like I'd I'd go look at the sky, but like, well, why is this happening for? Like, why do I need to go through this? So yeah, definitely, he would be the man that I would that, that I would talk to in, in my head, um, and he'd be like, it'd be like me safe, me safe haven in a sense. It's just tragic that obviously he wasn't there because I mean maybe it's a, a little cuddle or something there would have been would have just meant the world. Yeah. How old were you when you when you lost your granddad? I was only ten. Yeah. A young age, yeah, and that, do you know what? Do you know that the, the quite the quite thing of now with me level of understanding now is you, you, you only remember things for me from around about six year old, so it's only a small bit of time. So I thought, well, why have why have I never completely gotten over it yet? And that's because in my mind, subconsciously, I must know that when I've been with him, been in his arms, or whatever else, yeah. he's the only one that I've truly felt unconditional love for, and that's my maybe it's why I've never truly gotten over that, yeah, absolutely. It's a good way of putting it. I think sorry. Yeah. Oh, can I get your mic on? Just have a quick look at the comments on there. Yeah. Um, it's, uh, Tasha says there, Eddie, you've come so far. You should be proud of what you are now. Yeah. Of who you are Definitely. now. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Of yeah. Who you are now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah um, and I would, I would like to mention a special time back going back to the boxing as well, which we were talking about as well. My uncle Jimmy, James Spencer, um, he died on the, the bridges of Dunkirk, so he's, he's another hero of my family. And um, he was Durham, Durham light infantry um, boxing champion as well. So boxing's been quite installed in me, me um, in my blood, really, and where, where I come from, or fighting men. I wouldn't say necessarily just with your fists, I mean, like tough men, as we can probably see, you've got yeah. ancestors yourself which come there, proper men back then for me. Um, with your, your your morals, your self respect, and your integrity, like just everything, yeah. In and then tough times, yeah. tough men, yeah. Um. So yeah, he died in beaches of Dunkirk, and he was Durham box, boxing day champion, which is in that in itself with be, uh, being in the army with all them, every, everybody's wanting that little bit of, I'd imagine, fame or that little bit of thing. You want to be the best in there, and I'd imagine you would have some tough fights. Yeah, I was gonna say, do you, do you do you kind of still do the boxing? You still got a hand in that? Yeah, um, after my first fight, I got offered uh, two title fights with um, off uh, Darren. Obviously, I was a little bit inexperienced. It wasn't not that's not necessarily down to my ability. It's just the more you go, the more you go on. It's stage fight, even even now on here. Yeah, the more you go on, you, you learn to control like your nerves and, and nerves stuff, so you can perform to to the level that you know you can. So you kind of like got us the second fight on top of that. So it kind of like broke us in a little bit more. Mm. Um, so I had like yeah the two the two belt uh, fights are still matched and um, and I'd only been doing it like nine months um, so I'd had the two belt fights matched and then two other fights and then uh, I got on the card for Horsley Hill as well um, I'm currently on the card so I had three fights coming up I think it was the when did we get shut down I think it might have been the two two fights the two belt fights in April and then I had a, a fight for Horsley Hill and um, in the May as well coming up so i had like three fights this was all going to happen in three weeks i don't even know how i was going to do it because if i'd been knocked out there would have been no fight in three weeks you know what i mean but uh, yeah yeah <laughs> 
So where where where's a where's Eddie going? Where's he going to be in a year from now? Do you think? Yeah, one of my, one of one of my aims is I've all, I've always liked a bit of I want to, I want to, I want to, I want a business really. I am, and I want to um, yeah, distance myself a little bit more, and I want to find peace within myself to become something. Yeah. Certainly, alongside it, I do want to help people, but I'm thinking, can I can I really help people on the scale? Or can I get the job that I would like to help people? Maybe it's being a psychologist, or whatever else. At 30 year old and 29 year old with money and having to pay having to pay bills, it, it's it's unrealistic. You can't actually go to university and study then with the debt that comes with it. So that's mm -hmm. a little bit unrealistic. But I can do that for me social media and the credibility of my life and people like 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 so these things and mm -hmm. help people that way. But then also I want to do something for myself, and I certainly want to definitely want a, um, a business and I want to finish the end of the book because at 18 year old I've always wanted to write, write a book at around about 18 year old, 18 year old I say this, I want to write a book on my life because I know there's been a lot and I know there'd be like tears and I know there'd be a lot of laughs and what I want to write I just need the right back and the right, the right things to come together for that so I need the ending of that book yeah yeah, well, uh, Rod Glenn's your man. He's here with yeah, us yeah, still. Um, come you. and join us, Rod. Why not? Uh, now, Rod's written lots of books. I'm sure he can uh, give you some sort of uh, pointers there. Um, what what pointers would you give to Eddie in terms of getting started and kind of finishing off this book that he's, he's he'd love to finish off? It's just about finding your own unique voice and 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 write, writing it in in your style. That, so you can get ghost writers and things to help you with it, obviously. And that they can help sort of craft it and and tidy it up and things, but yeah, yeah in just just write it down your life, yeah, and then and then then it can be messed around with and and tidied up and and has that element element of realness really, doesn't it? Because you're seeing there, so it's still not like maybe it's let them people like take over take over in a sense because. I think people want to relate to the real person as yeah, well. Is exactly. that what you're seeing? That's yeah. why it's got to be your voice and it's got to be, it, it's got to be true to you. you. Yeah. Uh, so then you get someone to help you with the editing and tidying it up a bit, but it, it's got to be your story. And it's, yeah. so that's the important thing, but yeah, I can certainly help you with it. I can it was a little point. I think I wasn't sure if it was on, or it was on there. You give us that little point before as well. You were saying where you, you start at where you are present and that's why I want, I want something magical. I want something so powerful and inspiring at that moment in time. And I didn't know this, but now obviously you, you taught us because they are present. I want that. And then you see us to start from where it started, then lead you back up to present. I thought, well, that's, I never actually thought of it because I've never ex yeah. experienced your experience and that's so, all. Yeah, so you yeah. start with where you're at now and then you go back in time to where it all began. And yeah. then you tell your story through like that. So thank you for that. No problem. Yeah, absolutely. See, there we go. We hook it up here on the Big Big Show. Uh, <laughs> now, you, are, you are getting some love on the on the socials, uh, as understand it. Uh, uh, Gav says, Get on, Eddie, lad. You know the score, he says. <laughs> uh, there we go, Eddie. Uh, uh, Abby says, uh, Edward and Gracie will be so proud of you when they watch tomorrow. Well done. It takes guts, Ed. So there you go. And you get lots and lots Thank of you. love. Um, Victoria does say she would like to know something, by the way. She says, uh, could I ask, um, when do you turn 30? When do um, you turn 30? <laughs> don't have to give a specific date or time. Do you want, but, uh, do you want to know the date of birth? I think I think she'd just like to know the month, I think. Yeah, December. I'm Sagittarius. December. There we go. Sagittarius. Oh, start, a star sign. <laughs> <laughs> just a little bit. Uh, that's why they view, they view the show. There, there we go. Uh, yeah, so um, Heart of the Lion has Eddie Doyle. Uh, it takes a lot to speak out and inspire others in life. That's from Leo Neal. Yeah. So you get some, get some big love on the on – the, oh, oh, more uh, – T uh, Tasha says, Eddie, you have come so far. Uh, be proud of who you are now. You Thank go. you. Thank and, you and to be fair, Eddie, I mean, as we're talking to you tonight on the show, you know, you, you're seeing like you're in control of your life now. You yeah, seem yeah. like really positive. You're full of beans. <laughs> um, full of beans. Like, yeah, you are, though. But, <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah. Heinz. <laughs> but it seems like, you know, there's, there's, there's lots of other young men out there that, that, that even now might not have their, their kind of stuff together and um, would be doom and gloom. But uh, the, the couple of times that we've met you and, and spoke to you, you know, you've gone through some of that turmoil. But here you are. Very, you know, they like you say you're a good-looking bloke. You know what I mean. You dress well, um, but you've got that little glimmer in your eye, and you you, you feel like you've got a great future ahead of you. And that yeah, is a that's, good, that's a good, healthy feeling to it have. It takes a lot of courage to, to admit that you have dark times and that you you you've suffered you've suffered from depression. It takes a lot of courage yeah. to say that I've cried and that 
I just want to cuddle sometimes. Yeah, so that's it. Of course, of course you do. I mean, so I've no, I've no qualms in admitting that. I mean, on there because it's not like I walk around and I think a lot of people that know us. I'm, I mean, I'm not, I'm not scared of anything in, in that sense. So that you've got that. But I, yeah, of course I do. I like the love. I like the affection. I like, I like companionship. I've got a big heart. I mean, I can share a little story with you, which in time to that, I was there. Uh, I was at Bolden. Uh, it was two weeks ago. There was a hedgehog going across the road. I kind of like went over the hedgehog, right? And I went, oh no! And I kind of like my heart dropped. So I kind of put my hazards on the middle of the road, stopped all the traffic. So there's buses coming down this way, cars coming down this way. And I tried to pick up the hedgehog. I couldn't. So I'm looking about, what can I pick the hedgehog with to save its life? So I find there was a face mask on the floor. So I picked the hedgehog up and I put it in a bush. Yeah. So that's kind of like where, where me, where me yeah. heart's at. And yeah. on there that side go. of the story. So right. Mask saving yeah. lives. No, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You're doing it. You're doing it already. Yeah. So the hedgehog, was he fine, by the way? I should yeah, ask. Well, I, 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 right. He went to the bush. I can't, I can't speak from what he did later okay. on like but uh, he was fine well <laughs> he seemed all right yeah yeah, yeah. so you, you saved his life there yeah that's it so you are saving lives brilliant excellent so um where where will eddie be in five years do you think you yeah. talked about a business you know what sort of business might you go into give you yeah, i am at this moment it's looking it's looking definitely it's looking definitely more like the construction side at the moment i'm, I'm scaffolding and that's it's scaffolding um and then i'm doing i've got me maybe door tickets but it's not really um it's not really where where I want to be here, um, so I would definitely would definitely want to aim at construction. Maybe say um, there's certain things I don't really want to say in here, but construction's definitely the mm. one. Um, I'm looking at doing it with my brother. My brother's obviously called Aaron, so I hope he knows he needs to uh, go kick up the arsenal. Uh, <laughs> so well, I all brothers do. do, all brothers do. do I yeah, <laughs> but yeah, let's look, let's look, and like that at the moment, definitely maybe taking a few courses so we can cover everything. He's like a fully qualified, uh, qualified joiner. So that would definitely be the end goal of um mm. thingy, and then it's got a perfect, the perfect name as well, Ian E. Mm. And Ian E. Action emergency is quite catchy in the way. You could be the fourth look out. emergency service. Yes, the fourth one, isn't it? <laughs> you get one of those amber lights on top of your vehicle, your van, or whatever. You you'd be in business, yeah? but not not they're not um putting uh, time of generators third to the no, back of the van. No, no not this I, time. I, yeah. It'll be a legit, legit this time. Yeah, I'm sure it'll be a legitimate business as well. Yeah, of course it will. Of course it will. Uh, Victoria says, uh, I get hedgehogs come in the garden all the time, she says. No. No. Yeah. So, Hi, Victoria. Yeah, she says, Hi. <laughs> uh, she's, a, she's a weekly uh, viewer and listener to the show. Um, so, yeah, it's interesting. It's an interesting story, uh, Eddie, that you've, that you've got there. And I think, as I say, you know, 29, you're a young lad. You've got your whole life ahead of you, really, to be fair. You know, December 30th. Now, will it be a, a kind of lockdown kind of birthday or are you making big celebrations or you're – I have your plans. To, yeah, I'm gonna try and just try and keep it real. I'm obviously yeah. I want to celebrate it, but I want to celebrate it where I don't want to ruin it, where uh, ruin it in a sense. Um, yeah. it's a big birthday, then it's quite it's quite an overwhelming uh, birthday as well for a few few different reasons. Um, and then not only that, it's it's for me. I think a lot of motivation is gonna come from that because there's not many people that's lived that type of life that I've lived that lived and to that extent and have the mm. memories that I have. I don't want to just paint out it's all being bad. Now I've done various things for charity now they have drove like the faster cut fastest of cars i've jumped out with helicopters for uh, charity i've done ab sales for charity so it hasn't always been doom and gloom so yeah. i think i've always kept an element of i'm a good man i can still give back to society and do these things and achieve things i ran the great north run the 139 yeah. didn't even train for it this was going through the bad yeah. the bad point and the 139 is not far off like a semi-professional runner i think when you get under 130s you aim towards semi-professional yeah. i hadn't even trained for it i ended up on the drink the night before till about five <laughs> five o'clock in the morning <laughs> typical right? geordie style yeah. five o'clock yeah. in the morning i was up for nine i had to get the the, the bus or uh, the, the train over so i had four hours sleep and then obviously i started running it i think after the first couple of miles i thought you know I, I'm, I'm gonna collapse yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna think yeah. but like just my mental state of mind i thought nah i'm not i'm not giving enough came here I've came here to show up. I wanted to beat one four five, and mm -hmm. I smashed it. I won three nine, and this wow. is, I didn't even I didn't even run. I wasn't even mm -hmm. running, and plus I was mortal the night yeah. before as well. So, <laughs> could you imagine if I was actually trained for it? I could have actually more far away. Yeah, I was just about to say, can you can you imagine? You'd be like running past uh, yeah, you say, you. Oh, whoever. <laughs> I right, see you later. I'm being drinking Geordie lad. <laughs> Off he so goes to the winning. Forest jump as yeah. well. <laughs> Brilliant. Would you do another marathon again? Obviously, the Great North Run didn't I've happen looked. this year, but. Next year, is that a possibility? Do you think? Yeah, I'm looking. At, I mean, I'm looking. I was, look, I was looking at a cycle here um, that I've just recently shared. I was looking at doing that for charity here, um, tying it, tying up some girls. So that's like 980 mile a cycle. It's like 100 mm. mile, 100 mile a day for like 10 days. So I was looking at something to do with that. 
possibly I've always wanted to do a marathon before you t you, before it's too late because I reckon when you get to 30 if you haven't looked after yourself completely and you get into a certain age a marathon the marathon's asking you a bit much yeah um, so you don't really want to put your life at risk as well, um, well especially but, if you've got a refrigerator on your back or yes, you're one of them teddy yes. costumes you know <laughs> um, but yeah then then that or do you know there's one thing that I would do and I'd be prepared to put my life on the risk because I think my legacy is everything it would be um, climbing what climbing what was it um what do you call a mountain? Um, we have Mount Everest. Everest, mm. yeah. There's yeah, something yeah. about that's always fascinating, isn't yeah. it? And I wouldn't be bothered. I'd put my life on the risk. And, it, and yeah. if, it, if it's so big, I didn't make it back. Mm. Um, the most important thing is would be my kids, my kids' legacy, like, and would my kids work when they're older? And I'm thinking, well, yeah, if I didn't make it back, of course they could. Look, my dad put it all, put his life on the line. And he lived by the soil and he died by it. So the fascination mm. of wanting to do that, because I've heard uh, a lot of stories about that, and it would mm. just be fulfillment. I think I said that's the adrenaline seeker in you as yeah, well. Yeah, that's isn't it. it. Wanting to yes. do that. I mean, you said skydiving before. Yes, yeah. Jumping out of airplanes, stuff I like drove that. Drove an airplane as well. Yeah. Like. Have you really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's that's that thrill seeking thing. Yeah. Angle. So you know, in terms of that thrill, is that something you seek? Is that going to happen this year? Are you going to do something crazy this year? Or oh, you just never know when it's going to happen with me. You literally it, it don't. Is. I mean, I've just crashed me, crashed me BMW. I've got two, two knackered at the moment. So yeah. you just never know what's next for me. I, it's more as though I'm a guy. I know I'm a good person. I know I can help people, but yeah. I'm that, I'm that impulsive. You just, you just never know what's next. I keep, I keep people on the toes. Yeah, that's all. Like good. Mo Farah. <laughs> <laughs> is, is there actually yeah. anything that you've really wanted to do? You haven't done it yet. The boxing kind of put did some demons to me, but um, really want to do. Um, I'm kind of, in a sense, without telling you, because there's things that I still really want to do, and like the, I've just explained there, but I'm kind of doing it. In a sense, it's just about identifying who actually deserves that help, in a sense. And one one thing for me is, um, is helping people. Mm. I good. think society now is, I can't use the right term I would like to use for it, but uh, knackered. Um, I think um, every it's a doggy like I sort of what we were talking about before. It's a doggy dog world out there. Um, so I think, and it's coming down from the very top. It, the way as the way I describe it is, it's the Hoover that's sucking everything out of society at this moment in time. Um, he's tying it the conspiracy theories and stuff like that. I'm not going too deep into that, but oh, let's it let's, needs... let's let's go deep. <laughs> into deep into that. It, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, I quite thought. I believe some of it's far fetched, but a lot of it, some of it, if you usually lose logical thought, you, you, you it, look, it's happening. There, oh, there's a Hoover at the top, the sucking and everything out of society yeah. at the moment in time. Yeah. The stuff here, uh, you've got your insurance. Like it's, uh, mm. the way I describe it is, it's the biggest extortion and um, genocide of all time. Mm. And it's not necessarily the numbers that you're going to see on TV where the problems are going to come from. It's the aftermath. Yeah. That's where the yeah. real numbers, your mental yeah. health, you, you die. And yeah. you, mental you health is, is, is something that's on the rise massively. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was in this year and last year anyway, mm -hmm. but even more so COVID because, you know, six months in the inside. I mean, I was one of the lucky ones where I could get out and, and still function. But even I felt it, there was a couple of days where I was literally in the home. And I was just going, I need to get out of this house. Do you know what I mean? I need to get out of these four walls. Yeah. Um, but there's other people that have really, really suffered mentally through through COVID. I say I don't really want to go into too much because you do you tap with legal issues here as yeah. well. But I yeah. let's just say, uh, um, obviously, I didn't really agree with obviously getting locked away. Um, although I did find it tough. There was one thing, um, uh, there was one thing I heard that someone did. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, that someone did here uh, apparently they went they went um, the bm and the fam um, obviously they, they, they didn't agree with obviously what was happening there and the fam kind of fam um, getting into getting into the car and they've sat in the wheels windscreen at 80 going traveling at speeds of 80 to 100 mile an hour uh to uh, this is like one or two o'clock in the morning when the whole country's on global lockdown here uh, the kind of uh it was made like a, a pact of themselves like we well, can't be controlled as people mm. so if you have any idea who that was you can please um <laughs> tell us who it was <laughs> Interesting. It's, it's an interesting one. Yeah. Uh, you, you, but you are getting some love. Uh, Stephen Jackson says, uh, good on you, mate. Sounds like you've come a long way and sounds like you've uh, you've got good morals. Keep it up, pal. So you, you. you are getting plenty of love there. Um, Everest, uh, says Abby. Yeah, you, you, you would climb Everest. Yeah, yeah. that's it. Yeah, There's definitely. also another one, isn't there? Is there one in Scotland called Ben Nevis? Is ben that Nevis. Right? Is that right? yeah. We, we, we were there last year. Oh, you were there last year? Yeah, yeah. I was right near there last did, year. Did you do it? No, no, we didn't go. We the strange thing about it is they sell like these t-shirts down on the bottom saying i've climbed ben nevis yeah. now what's the point of giving them away you should or no, sorry selling them at the bottom 
you should put the shuffle so, on the top. So, yeah, yeah. So you, know, you have to you climb have it. To climb you've, it got to climb up. you've got to climb to get that T-shirt. Yeah, <laughs> That's That's it, tying, the, tying at the mountains is something that you can do. It's called the free pig challenge. You've got to do yeah. it within your, 20, oh, yeah. your, your 24 yeah. hours. So I, I would definitely love, love to do something like that and maybe see able to do that, yeah. definitely. But you need you need like, a group of lads sharing the same sort of... Um, Passion to do. Yeah. yeah. Because and you need you're swapping over driving and stuff. So yeah. yeah. If, you do, if you're doing sponsorship for charity, because that kind of... I know I don't even want to sound like I'm pulling away from it, but when you've got so much going on in your life, mm. when you commit to a charity thing, mm. it kind of puts an added pressure on you because yeah. you've also got the training, you've got work, you've got yeah. your bills, you've got other things yeah. to go on. Yeah. So you've kind of like got to be in a completely ready place. But even even then, you're not ready because you'll know yourself when you're going to work. It's grind, 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 grind all yeah. the time. And yeah. it's, it is for everybody. That's the way yeah. society is. So yeah. it's finding the time to actually help yourself, mm. but also help other people yeah, you yeah. got you certainly gotta you know you've got to get that work-life balance you've got yeah. to take some time out and even if it's literally do you know what it is it's harder to take the time out because of social media if you're running a business you're using social media to fill that business you're almost on call 24 yeah. 7 and, and it's hard to kind of switch off yeah. um and it's nice i think this weekend was the first weekend and i mean this year where i've actually laid on the bed shut my eyes and i, I didn't go to sleep i just chilled yeah you know i mean the time. phone was on mute and i just thought an hour that's all i need reboot and uh it does you the world of good and yeah. if you can get out there and you know do a spa or something go for a walk climb up ben nevis uh get some of that fresh Whatever air that takes. oxygen yeah, in, that's you know that's, it's all it's all good yeah. yeah definitely um i could see us now um doing an 8k ben nevis challenge <laughs> uh, got that, the lads this the might happen uh, you know <laughs> oh, all right then <laughs> we, we, it, it's where it all starts you know once you've had a drink or when you're in the pub the, all these great ideas come out and uh, then you execute them you know um did you hear about the hun the 101 hours we did for charity a few uh, a few weeks ago oh, well, yeah. a couple of months now no, wasn't it no, what was it? What was oh, it? did you not know about that oh actually i don't know i don't want to no, no. well we were um we thought it'd be a great idea to do 24 hours as a podcast um so we do the first 24 hours um easy enough so we went live uh 4 p.m on the sunday did 24 hours we went to go and raise uh, ten thousand for a local charity yeah. uh the chronicle sunshine fund and uh we weren't too far off i think we got it up to about six thousand or something uh and we thought yeah let's do another 24 hours so then it turned 20 uh, 48 hours um and while we were there we were thinking well actually what's the longest ever podcast what's the world's longest podcast let's have a look so we went on the guinness book of records and it was 66 uh, so sorry it was 36 hours so we thought well we've, well we've kind of done the whole 24 thing let's just go for 36 and see what happens so we went up to 40 hours and we thought well, we've kind of done that what other world records can we do while we're on this journey yeah. um and then we got the 72 hours and then we went for the whole century we actually did 101 hours live on the radio non-stop no breaks no sleep no nothing mm. um and we smashed two world records, one for podcast, 36 hours, we did 101, and one for radio, which was 66 hours was the longest radio show. We did 101 hours. That was That's tough. Brilliant. That was I real tough. I need the round of applause. Yeah, real tough. It? Yeah, thank you. Yeah, we'll, 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 we'll give me about that. Uh, but the great thing is, the good thing was that we actually raised over ten thousand pounds for the chronicle sunshine phone which was above above our target that we said we were going to do so it was an amazing nice, plenty of red bull uh, it was loads lots of red, red bull, bull yes, and uh, yes. water we probably didn't eat as well as what we should have no. done uh but it, you know the weird thing was because when you do these endurances uh the mindset says oh yeah that's easy in a pub yeah. when you've yeah. had a beer everything's easy, easy yes, uh, exactly when you're right. actually doing it it's yeah. tough uh and then you wish you didn't do it and then you go through all that process but when we did it um afterwards it was really weird because we finished on the thursday night 8 p.m which was the last clap for the nhs mm -hmm. uh we were still on the li still live on the radio and we went to 9 p.m that was exactly 101 hours and then by the time we had drinks and terry was there we were celebrating and stuff like that um it was about 1 a.m by the time i went to sleep and i thought right phone off i am gonna sleep for england i'm ne i never lie in i'm normally an early bird but i thought no i'm gonna lie in for once you know what time i woke up Six a.m. <laughs> bugger, bugger. I can't even have a lion when I want to have a lion. Uh, That's and like the, story of my life. <laughs> unbelievable. And uh, the next day, I was I was up at eight a.m. And then the third day, it was like a freight train. I felt ill, really, really yeah. bad. It, like the body has this delay mechanism. It's almost yeah, like yeah. a delay. Right. Uh, I think organs were starting to shut down. You know what I mean? <laughs> uh, so it was tough. And then it took me about a week to recover before I felt normal again. Yeah. It took about a week. 
So it's it was a journey and a half late, but well, it was an achievement. It yeah, was an amazing was achievement. And we've, we've got the frame it. over in reception that it's waiting for the certificate. We can't wait to shove that in there, you know. But uh, it was great. So I think we could definitely do a, another challenge at some point. Yes, Ben that, Nevis sounds yes. possible. <laughs> uh, where, where's <laughs> Everest? Three pigs, twenty four hours because we went to what was it? Uh, Over a oh. hundred hours, so twenty four yeah. hours shouldn't be too bad. Yeah, yeah, we should be able to do twenty four <laughs> easy. That's that's a walk in the park. <laughs> <laughs> Rod, sponsored by Red Bull. Uh, we'll see. Uh, we tried to get an energy drink sponsor, uh, but Gaz was he he he, he was on the energy drinks big time, big oh, time, uh, and he was on well, you know, because it, 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 it messes with your your stomach, you know, yeah. uh, all that gas and stuff. But uh, you know, yeah, you need you need a little bit of energy to get at the top of that mountain. Um, what's the most weirdest and wonderful thing you've ever done, Eddie, in your life? The biggest thing, the biggest achievement, or the biggest challenge something that where you thought you know you'd hit this barrier and you pushed through what, what was it for you it could be anything by the way um this would be like pretty deep this um uh probably the most overcome um, thing i think um when i lost my when i, when I lost everything and everything like kind of like um spiral lot of control that would um i was like living in sunday at the time and i was by myself and i didn't really have nobody um Kind of looked at the balance there, um, and I kind of like got my bed sheet. I cut the bed sheet, and I thought, "Well, this is it. I can't be bothered anymore." And then I, say, I tied, tied it, um, tied it around. Um, obviously, I, as you, I, as what you're doing, I kind of like pulled it, tried strength to see what it is. And then the bed sheet kind of like ripped. But before that, there was a story I was looking at, looking at the street neighbours because I was just looking at the neighbours saying, "I hey, obviously come and help us. Come, yeah. someone just come and help us." Didn't really want to obviously speak out for help at the time. So I think overcoming that and making out of that was alive because what happened was was um like i say when i tried the strength of it the bed sheet was going to always rip so if i'd done it it was always going to rip so i knew then it wasn't my time yeah and overcoming that was pretty that, that was, was tough yeah that was yeah. yeah rod what was your toughest time do you think it could be anything it could be acting it could be anything at all something personal to you and I do apologise yeah. how deep that was. No, so. no, that's cool. Yeah, no, it doesn't deep. have to be that deep. But yeah, yeah, <laughs> God. yeah. yeah. Uh, oh God, I don't know. Um, yeah, that's that puts you on the spot. That so I'm sorry, I do, do, do apologise. <laughs> so yeah, there that. was this hedgehog I came across, and he, <laughs> told, yeah. he told me this story. Said this guy just stopped this guardian angel out of nowhere <laughs> and saved me, and that hedgehog went on. He, he got his law degree. I mean, he's he's doing fantastic down in London now. Mm. Um, but no, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> but time, time, time back into that. I know you obviously it's it's not really what you want to hear on the radio on the deep. But when I've asked the question, I'm quite a I'm quite a guy that'll be honest about certain situations um, within myself. So when you've asked the question, I thought I cannot run away from actually giving the honest answer mm. to it. So mm. it was just overcoming or, or over, overcoming that with obviously sheer honesty. So if anybody yeah. is in them 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 sort of positions or ever been in them positions you just know that you're, you're, you're never alone and you, you 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 can make it through anything you yeah. want it's just literally all down to your mindset and i look take me for instance i didn't really have nobody at that moment of time literally nobody it was just down to me on my own mindset and then i'm getting quite a lot of messages and and uh looking for pointers on their lives and trying to add, well how you're so strong and how you're so positive but well, these are the types of reasons and why i've become mm. so strong within myself because when you're in their moments, you're being strong is you, that's that's yeah. only that that is only your, your only choice. Yeah, it is. You know, you, you know the thing is though, when you think about it, it's, it's you know in people's lives, um, people have had it tough. People have had it not so tough. Um, but I'll say one thing: what's shameful is we've all have a talent, whether you know it or not. We've yeah. all got a talent. We all have a gift, whatever that happens to be. You just got to figure out what it is. You, we've all got something to give to somebody. We've all can impact someone else's life, yeah. someone else's life in a positive way. Absolutely, you know, there's nothing more rewarding than doing something selfless for another person who who you've helped to support in any way, shape, or form. And no matter how small that gesture is, um, there's nothing more rewarding than that. All the money in the world won't won't give you the feeling that you get when you help another person. See, time, in need, you time, know? Yeah. time, time. What you see is there. This coming on, coming and coming on here was never about me. No. It was um, no, um, it was never it was never about me. It was it was more to do with because I kind of like heard 
obviously the reaction and the amount of people it was more to do with just speaking out because i don't think i think people just think that they're, they're too they're too big or too clever or whatever else mm. this is pride thing this ego thing going on yeah. they'll not speak up and do it no so hopefully when you when you hear things like that you, you can't speak out and you can't and you can't help yeah um, so it was more more about helping people yeah absolutely and it's you know if if you're helping somebody you're touching someone else's life in a positive way that's always a good thing yeah, yeah. um that's amazing and a lot of these things that are done and said and done they are selfless deeds you yeah, know there doesn't need it. to necessarily you know there doesn't need to be a reward for it no financial or anything it, it, you're really, everybody needs help yeah, yeah that's absolutely it. Everybody everybody needs help from time to time. Yeah. the thing is rod people are too proud to sometimes ask for help. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So sometimes all you want is somebody to give you a ring. I've been in a place where I'm too proud to ask for help. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I'm happy to help others. I'll give anybody well, the last five pound note. That yeah. You, that you're going to, that yeah. you're not going to get. You don't want to reach for charity, but at the same time, if the phone rings, it's like, how are you doing? You're all right. Yeah. And you can kind of open up to so that. You know, tiny, tiny, the, the, the element of trust going on because they um, uh, trust as well. Because some people as well, they open up the wrong people, and they kind of like get the they, they get bit off bit off from it. Mm. And that's when they obviously you 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 start creating society, which starts developing things and and mechanisms which which to stop that happening. So you stop speaking out, but then that creates more fear. Uh, more problems for society so it's more about everybody as a community coming together to yeah. make this happen to Massively. make it count because yeah. if people are not going to be open now he's going to stab us in the back or this or that mm. they're not going to it's all about coming together as a human community and thinking everybody doing it at the same yeah. time let it be a collective responsibility yeah, rather than trust yeah 100 yeah. percent i mean you're, say, you're saying some real key, key words there collective that's mm -hmm. an important word for us here even mm -hmm. in the studios you know like yeah we've had to walk through so much sewage should i say yeah. to get to where we are now fight tooth nail you know for nothing we've had to give up salaries we've had to do it as a, a complete you know we've had to be on empty you yeah. know do you know what i mean yeah. there's been times where you know i've had i've headed here and i haven't even had enough petrol to know i can even get back do you know what i mean there's some tough times we've yeah. had we're through a lot of this now and the lights at the end of the tunnel, uh, you know, do you know what I mean? But like to do something like this, where you're doing it as a selfless thing, people yeah. don't always buy into that. They think, Oh, you have an alternative thing. You know, you're making money. Da, da, da. Actually, no, I'm not actually, you want to realize how much I'm giving up to do this, yeah, but like, just, there, there, there is that help. You want to help others. You want to bring, you want to create something from nothing. And that's very, very difficult to do. You know, you're creating an actor center. You're creating something for the Northeast. You you see it. Yeah. You're trying to do all of these grand things. Um, through no help most of the time yeah, which is true. really really tough really really tough but we're here and we're talking about yeah, it yeah that's, that's it 100%. that's the main thing we're, we're here it's them moments it's them moments in your life sorry yeah. Uh, yeah. it's them moments in your life where i feel them um, that make you it's the adversities isn't it i don't mm. like well i think i was talking to rod about it before yeah. it's the advert it's the adversities that really do you you, yeah. you learn so much from i mean i've had the moments of triumphs i've had the moments but to be honest with you they, they didn't really mean as much mm. i think it's we are overcoming over, overcoming things is where you really truly find out who you are and what you're Absolutely. about yeah you find your strength mm -hmm. you it, all, say it all starts yeah. from talking about it it does just yeah. opening up yeah. Yeah. yeah it does and here we are uh four or five men this this, this shane six, men uh <laughs> men real <laughs> strapping men but you know we've all been at places in our lives yeah. where you know, we've been brought down to tears, as you as yeah, you said earlier, 100%. Eddie. You know, yeah. and, and to say that, you know, on radio, on TV, to say, look, yeah, I'm a I'm a full grown man. Yeah, I can mm -hmm. handle myself in the ring, mm -hmm. but I have times where I'll cry. Yeah, do you know what I mean? As as we all have, we'll, we'll have a sad, we'll have a sad movie. Yeah. I mean, you just think at the end of a Titanic when uh, when yeah. she when she leaves Jack. Oh, you know, yeah. we'll all have a little uh, yeah. Yeah. a little tear there. Yeah. So <laughs> a personal message, uh, you women out there, you women out there who think we're just all have this exterior hard shell. You know, we are emotional too. Yes. We we have our own you know demons to deal with absolutely we're all emotional wrecks we are <laughs> <laughs> you know when we say we're going to the pub we're just meeting a mate for a pub we're not we're all getting having heart to hearts and then just crying on each other's shoulders <laughs> uh, that's what we really do uh if only uh but yeah you know it's um it's been great having you on the show we've really enjoyed it i know we've got another sort of 20 minutes or so uh left uh you'll stay with us i'm sure for the next 20 minutes yeah yeah yep. let's give eddie a massive round of applause well done eddie thank you, thank you. We've enjoyed having you. Now, um, you've enjoyed being here. Yeah. Yeah. Are you going to come back? Yeah. Well, of why not? Is, yeah, yeah. I, mean, I just want to. I want to really thank him. Yeah. Um, I want to really thank you for this opportunity. And you know, and it was like through through you and um, Lee and like other people, and obviously just the people that have been listening as well through us all now having this conversation collectively because <laughs> even even Rod, for instance, and even yourself, um, 
like we've all we've all we've all come together here and put with thoughts and feelings you kind of put your, your your stuff on your line there when you say look i, I kind of like went to work with nothing mm. there's not like oh, there's not many people that's admitting it so i mean with having such an audience that actually can see this and see this happening mm. from all of us and have mm. our own little stories kind of it's kind of like massive and it, it's like not just praise it's, it's massive praise for us all standing yeah. really in this room absolutely so, you know what it is you know I'll fly the flag for the northeast any yes, day of the week. Yes, you know, that's we, it. We, you know, it's on the cap. You know, like <laughs> the northeast is where it's at. And, yeah. and you know, we talk about acting, we talk about opportunities, we talk about boxing, uh, we talk about all the things that we do. But the northeast is so underrepresented. Yeah. You know, like Manchester. You know, yes, you know they've got the TV studios and all that, and and they're, they're building framework between independent filmmakers and broadcast, and they're bringing that together with Media City. You've got London, where everything seems to be happening. You know, um, but things are changing. You know, when you take a broadcaster like Channel Four, who pull out of London, I would have never have seen that happen in a million years. Mm -hmm. um, so can... things are changing. Yeah, they're pulling out of London. They've gone to Leeds and they've set up satellite places around the UK as well. So in terms of media, in terms of television, film, these type of new creative kind of opportunities, um, I feel what we're doing here, although we're doing it on a small scale at the moment, yeah. I see us really creating something yes do, yeah. do you know what i mean like yeah, we've, we've it, got yeah. the place now we've got the equipment from doing, little acorns from little yeah, acorns we've it. got those seeds and now it's about getting people engaged you know be able to actually churn out content at an at a, at a unprecedented rate now you know, we couldn't do that before you know when when i met rod a year ago so ago and we were doing you know morland's firm we were working everything out of a, a out of a garden shed do you know what i mean like we had nothing when we did that um so now we have premises we're able to you know have meetings you know work with actors workshop the material um and now just drive content out you know like that's what it's all about nowadays and, and, and putting the word out there whether it's a you know a pl platform like this where it's a podcast or a radio show where you're able to come on and put your view out there help others because th there's listeners now on nova radio 102.5 yeah fm uh you know they're there now and you know they might just be laying in bed now just listening to the show you know they're not they might not necessarily engage with the show yeah, but could there'll be just be, one listener yeah, out there one listener, who thinks yeah. actually i can reach out to someone absolutely yeah. absolutely yeah, i am going to talk to someone and that if, yeah. it, if it reaches one single person then it's yeah. it's done fantastic yeah. Yeah, we, 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 we're working on a music video now, and um, there's some truths in that video. And, and you know, we've all been to dark places, um, and sometimes things can get on top of you, as, as we've discussed That's with Eddie tonight. And, 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 you know, you can be in that place where you go, what is the point? Yeah. Like, what is the point? All that effort, all that graph, you feel like you're going somewhere, and it can, the rug can be pulled from under your feet within seconds, and then you reassess everything and go, whoa, whoa what am I doing here? You know, where are we going with this? For me, it's like where where's the, it's for me it's, it's time back down to like where like where where's the love like you're talking time back to society for me it's been a major problem because I've never mm. really had like like in terms of like your, your your family there for instance like these key figures that you needed and mm. then obviously you're tied in with your friends and the way society is and it's like a dog a dog world I think mm. that's it wasn't nothing to do with my own mental or me being weak it was the me obviously the, what, what society in general is putting on you yeah. and then a kind of because me I didn't get the education that I should have had really um back then uh because because of these reasons kind of like just shut shut doors as well so mm. any get out any get out away from it is um was was difficult then and then obviously getting me first arrest which obviously limited things so then i limited my opportunities but i limited them through obviously them you're bringing so kind of like shutting it shut doors i don't want to paint out a picture of myself of where obviously oh it's just been my mental state of mind because i think mental health is it's just a label for me um they just label it mental health it's 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 how people treat each other mm. and it's the certain things that we're relying on within society to um to cope which is creating these mental thoughts if you like because i would say it's a stigma a uh, mental health and i don't really like it it's like when you relate to certain situations where um the, the victim was it no one likes to be called a victim when they're a victim or something the, the survivor that they, they say that in a sense and it's it, that that same sort of thing i think when you when you talk about mental health i think everybody's missing the actual point yeah and the, 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 it's, it's 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 a stigma in a sense and i think yeah we need to go back to actually what's real where's it actually coming from yeah and can we change it yeah you get back to the root of the cause and you yeah. just say look it's like a, I, I i class these things as as, as like a tree like a branch yeah. You can branch off. You can go down the bad route of crime, for example. Yeah, yeah. Um, and some of the things that we might 
push somebody. You can be pushed down those routes yeah, sometimes say, by course. peer pressure, yeah. or or sometimes or you have lack of opportunity or, yeah. and need yeah. sometimes. Absolutely. So, uh, but if you've got the heart in the right place, you can do so much good in the world. And yeah. you sound like a person, as we've been talking to you for the last hour. Like you've you've got lots of good yeah. to give, yeah. not yeah. just tell your story, but you've got yeah. a lot of passion behind it. And you kind of want to help others, do you know what I mean? And that, that that's a great thing to have that, that those credentials, do you know what I mean? To be able to, be able to want to do that. Um, and as you said before, uh, Rod, when you mentioned about, you know, if there's one listener that's listened tonight and thought, you know what, I could go out and commit a crime tomorrow. Yeah. Or, you know what it is? I might pull out a, prospe- a, a prospectus for a university and apply to uni yeah. and go on a good path. When you choose that good path, it can it can enrich your life in a different way. Or even somebody, educational. Yeah, hundred percent. Or yeah. even someone what's already on a good path, what doesn't really have uh, that the, the mental steel, mental toughness to make this yeah. this big call. Or, yeah. or well, I should, they're now they're watching this and thinking, I can yeah. do it. I'm going to make yeah. that call. It's going to benefit my life. So it it can come from all all different different types. Yeah. But like just time time back and back down to yourself. I mean, I think you're going to obviously just for the likes of these things. And all it's an amazing job. It's given a lot of amazing opportunities to a lot of people. Um proud to share my story on on your show as well so i think um, but without you guys this doesn't happen Mm. no no we appreciate it and the thing is we're here we're here for this without you yeah yeah. we don't happen either you know it it kind of all helps each other collective responsibility the the collective thing absolutely and you know what it is whether it's telling the story whether it's engaging in creative you know uh you know film media whatever it might be it's about getting people together to do something positive. Yes, that, that's yes, the top yes, and bottom yes. of it. Yeah. Where, where, however, whatever we do, whether you make a film, whether you tell a story, whether you, you're doing a platform like a podcast, whatever it is, it's people coming together to all kind of, everybody's building each other up yeah, in a positive way. Help, and yeah. we all leave yeah. here tonight thinking we did a good thing. So the people yeah. that are the Hoover, like who time back know the Hoover and suck life out or whatever and try to minimize yeah. these opportunities as much as like but yeah. when the people come together we are yeah. powerful yeah. very powerful in numbers I yes. might add. massive yeah. in fact most of the time we don't even realize that mm-hmm. most of the time you don't even realize it. that much million percent. yeah yeah absolutely i think the best thing most people can do and this is a personal thing i'm about to say uh is is you know switch off the news you know, yes. come off yes. social media Definitely. once in a while. Yep. You know what? Learn a new hobby. Take up something yep. that's interesting. Go to the local community center. You know, plug in with other people that's got your viewpoint. You know, whatever you're into. Sometimes just go for a walk and go for yeah. a walk. Yeah, take some, have some. Go f- to the beach. Time. Yeah, yeah. Stand and look at the the ocean for Absolutely. a bit. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. It's completely. Watch the is. birds. Walk along the park. Go and feed the ducks. They're little tiny things. You know what it is? It costs nothing. nothing. Yeah. It costs you that's nothing. It. And the, the smallest things. things that you'll you'll realize because uh, whichever way you want to look at it, we're all going to die one day. Yeah, you know, we're, we're, it's all coming. You know, we're all on yeah. borrowed time, and you're going to either sit there and think, did I did enough? Did I do enough in the world? Mm-hmm. Did I was I selfish? Did I help others? Mm-hmm. You know, did I, did make I spend, a difference? Did I make a difference? Do you know what I mean? Whether it's family, friends, or anything you're into, and you know, did, did you leave a legacy? Did you leave something for somebody? To, to to pick up that button and and carry something forward you know so you know that, that big question mark don't know the big question mark on the big big show <laughs> on the big big show uh, now you're talking about big big show let's uh let's lift the mood a little bit shall we there we go a little bit of music there uh, now we did have some love coming in as we were discussing things it went yeah. it went a little deep for a while, a while there terry it did, didn't it? It did. Yeah. But, uh, we, you know, it, it's thank you for bearing with us. Uh, we do appreciate it. Now, Kylie Robertson says um, uh, he's got a good woman behind him now also. Uh, good on you, Abby Robinson. Is that who we're talking about? Are we talking about you, Eddie? Yeah. yeah, well, yeah, yeah okay. and there's the kind of, kind of like little thing going yeah. on behind that. So, uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, we're not going to. No. Go okay. Okay. Well, there you go. Uh, Victoria says, "Let's play games before you end the show." Uh, <laughs> yes. We might have to finish off on a game. Well, don't worry. We'll we'll build it back up. Uh, Claire Claire Louise Murray says, uh, "Speaking about emotions, uh, and a man openly admitting he cries and needs a cuddle from time to time is what makes a man a real man." Well done, Eddie. Um, that's from Claire. Absolutely. Lovely. And lots of kisses coming with that as well. Um, absolutely spot on in what you've said on this, guys. Uh, an inspirational Eddie. That's from Dave Gardner. Uh, Gav Brad says uh, it's all about trust of telling people uh, because some people don't want to let people who can manipulate them know your weakness. Mm. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. There are manipulating people out there. But yeah. then again, are they victims of, of something else has happened to them? You know, like, you know, they, they might have fallen on unfortunate 
you know, yeah, yeah, whatever. Yeah. Uh, for prizes or money, uh, it, Victoria, we can't just give away stuff. We're on a budget here. Uh, <laughs> we're not even sponsored yet, um, unless we get sponsored by somebody. I don't know who. Uh, oh, I'll get tell you what book. we'll do. Uh, book. <laughs> <laughs> let's go to the book. Um, now, listen, do you want to win? You can win this tonight, an exclusive um, Rod Glenn's uh, book. It's called Cinema. Is that right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, Cinema, The Northumberland Massacre by Rod Glenn. It is available in all good kind of bookstores, Amazon, that type of thing. Um, Glenn is here in the studio now. He's been on the red couch. He will sign a personal copy of this for you tonight. Um, should we do it with a question? Or should we do it with the Wheel of Doom? Wheel of Doom. Wheel of Doom. Yes, Wheel of Doom. Oh, Wheel okay. Of Doom. <laughs> okay. So, uh, Victoria and everyone else that's watching and listening to the show, uh, if you want to win the prize right now, you can. Uh, you've got to call the show, though. All right. That's how we're going to do it tonight. 0191 6464 is the number. Uh, give us a call and we'll get you live on the show and you can win this baby right here. All right. So, uh, Shane, switch to, switch you might to this camera. You might want to go on. Um, oh, 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 hold on a sec. Hold on. There we go. Phone, phone in. Phone in. Phone home. Uh, Shane, you might need to go on phones just in case they ring. Uh, 0191 The number's down below, and you can win a copy of uh, this. One copy only. Exclusive. Tonight. Cinema. Signed. Signed. <laughs> uh, cinema. <laughs> the Northumberland Massacre by Rod Glenn. Live. Okay, something like that. Uh, it worked better when I had a bassy voice yeah, after 101 good. hours. Good. No, don't, don't put kinda, yourself down. Kind of, kind of. Uh, anyway, uh, so yeah, uh, 0191 6464 uh, Why can't I do it in the comments, she says, uh, because you have to phone the show. <laughs> phone the show. That's what you've got to do. 0191 6464 Now, we're on Nova Radio 102.5 FM across Newcastle, Gateshead, and around the world uh, via your smart speaker uh, until 12 tonight. So you've got about another ooh, 19 minutes or so. Uh, and then we may do an extra part of the show uh, for five or 10 minutes afterwards. Uh, we might do that tonight if, it, if, if we're up for it. We'll see. Uh, where it, Things might get a little bit rude because they can after we're off the radio. Uh, so that might happen tonight. We'll see. Uh, depends what your engagement's like on the show for the rest of tonight. Now, uh, if you want to give us a bit of love on the text, you can. And, of course, you can share us on uh, YouTube and Facebook Live down below, down below. And you can watch the show later during the week as well, because uh, we do get people that drop in and watch the show during the week, yeah, Terry. So we do. It, it happens. Uh, now, if you've enjoyed everything we've talked about on the show tonight, uh, Eddie's away. Five minutes? No, he's away. No. no, he wants him for five minutes. Okay, yeah. uh, Eddie's going to leave the couch for five minutes. Don't worry, we still got Rod Glenn here on the sofa. <laughs> he gets all the room. Then uh, there we go. Uh, he's still mic'd as well. Uh, the phone line's down. Oh, oh, God. Terry, I knew I, I this would happen. I thought that was, we, I was Hold wondering on why second. we weren't getting a lot of calls. We, do you know what it is? The phone is down. Sorry about this. Oh, I'm switching back on. Now. It's because we're in the studio. I haven't got a keyboard. I need a keyboard. Oh, this is so difficult. Right. What I'm going to have to do is I have to put you in charge with, with Rod and um, uh, there we go. Uh, Terry, <laughs> you're going to have to switch between these two cameras. Oh, look, Rod's made himself at home. Uh, let me go yeah. and sort the phones out real quick. <laughs> uh, you'll have to switch right. between camera yeah, two yeah, and three. Yeah, right. I'll take your time. It's okay, all good. So, uh, yeah. So, so, Terry, Terrence, T Meister. Hold on. Look, I'm <laughs> okay. Framed up. I'm, I'm not on the wrong camera. Yeah, yeah. Oh, You're on the wrong camera, mate. Where is it? On that mouse pad. The mouse. Oh, sorry. Yeah, cheers. Cheers, oh. <laughs> That's what happens when you're in a live show, isn't it? Oh, yeah, everything happens. Yeah, I know. Um, let me see. I'm... Which camera am I on? This one's on. Right, that's, oh, that's there right. you are. Okay. Yeah, he's right. back again, yeah, folks. Yeah, yeah, I'm back. So, anyway, uh, yeah. Rob, what I, what I want to know is when you do come to do your next film yeah whatever it may be how do we go about how would i get in touch for maybe casting for it or something i'll put my name forward for it myself um the most castings for the big stuff uh, the big films and tv shows are through uh, a website called spotlight which um if you're going to be a professional career actor and make you know make a career out of it you need to be on spotlight um and unfortunately, you also really need a, a decent agent as well, which most of them happen to be down in London. They, they're London based. Um, so other than that, I mean, you can you can contact casting directors direct. You can drop them an email. 
um, and just say, look, here's, here's some of my showreel footage. Um, please bear me in mind for any future projects that are coming up. Casting directors don't mind you contacting them direct. So there's no problem with that. And it's usually fairly read, readily, readily, easily found to blah, 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 blah. Um, you can usually find their email addresses quite easily. Yeah. Um, I've actually been on Spotlight myself. I've still got the Spotlight cards, but I, I came out of it quite a few years ago because um, I, I really still wasn't getting any work from it. You know, right. from being in it, I didn't get more. I got more work from not being in it, to be quite honest. And that wasn't, I don't know if it was because I came out of it. I'm not saying that's, mm. that was the reason, but I didn't get anything from being in it. How long ago are we talking here? Because Spotlight certainly in the last 10 years has now become the casting platform. Um, it used, there used to be a multitude of other, well, there still are a number of casting platforms out there, but all of the big casting directors use Spotlight now. It's, yeah, um, I'm thinking because obviously with us doing having any films, um, mm. And we've obviously we've got, we've got people come to the workshops and stuff like that. So this is probably going to be breaking boundaries a little bit for, you know, not having to have, be a spotlight member. It's probably going to help, but you know, obviously I've, I've been involved with um, any films uh, productions in the past. And I do believe that, you know, with angels coming up, that I will get something in that I've been, well, I've been told I will, but anyway, but yeah. so I'm, I'm, I'm thinking, so it's not actually relying on the spotlight being in it so well, you know, no, that's that's, that's that's and if you can get away with that then great um i mean i get the big jobs through spotlight but i also i, I still um do a lot of acting in low budget stuff and so i mean so there's other sites like starnow.co.uk um for sort of lower budget stuff um that's a good site to be on and to have a, a presence on and also there's lots of Facebook groups and, and things like that where people will post up castings, say uh, we're looking for this type of person, this type of actor. Um, and Twitter as well. Sometimes casting directors or directors and producers will post up castings on Twitter. So it's good to follow casting directors and directors on there. So yeah, you don't, Spotlight isn't the be, end, be all and end all, but mm. for the big stuff, the big TV shows, the big films, that's where they all yeah. post the castings. So to get those, you have to be on Spotlight. Um, got a quick question about the Spotlight because I said I've been in it, in it before. Mm. Um, if I've come out of Spotlight and I've, but I've still got them, I still have the the number. Is am I able to get back in with that same number? You just, yeah, you just need you, to you reactivate it and by sending Spotlight an email and just saying I've met, <laughs> I don't know what you might say. You might say you've had a hiatus and uh, you're just wanting to to get back on the Spotlight. Um, they will have your historical stuff there anyway. Okay, yeah. Because so, normally you need at least, it's either two or three paid that's correct, professional yeah, credits that's before they allow you on. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. So you should already have those anyway from yeah. historically. So you should be allowed back onto it. Well, that's, that's good. Because I was, I was really wondering about that, like, because mm. um, I, was, I was thinking about it. Um, how much is it? Do you, do you know how much it is? Something like about 140 quid a year or something off the top of my head. I can't remember. But yeah, something like that. Yeah. It's not a, it, it, well, it is a lot of money, but it's not a lot of money. If you can get, if you get one or two paid jobs yeah. off the back of it it's gonna be, per it's year, gonna pay it's for paid itself, for itself it? straight yeah. away. Definitely, yeah. So, yeah, it's yeah, definitely back, worth doing. Back in the room. Okay. And back in the back room. Back in the room. He's back in the room. Now, uh, <laughs> I've sorted the telephones out. Uh, it was my mistake because before setting up the show, I meant to take them off the, the phone system that we've got here, which is like, you know, after hours, uh, I meant to forward it to the mobile, but they're up and, run, they're up and running again now. So 01916464555, you can now call the show live. Uh, so if you want to win this book, Rod Glenn, Cinema, a Northumberland Massacre, uh, and he'll sign it for you personally, put a nice personal message in there tonight. I there will. we go. Uh, he'll do that for you. Uh, then just call the show now. 0191 6464 triple five. Uh, and we'll figure out if you want to play the wheel of doom tonight, I which you can play any message in there that you want. Yeah. Any message at all. Anything, anything. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> uh, so there we go. Uh, now you obviously we're talking about acting there, um, and yeah. spotlight, which is where the actor's Bible, I guess. Um, and IMDB and all these type of things. Um, but people could now, Drop into the Actors Centre right here in Fallon Gateshead. They yes, can do they that. Can. Uh, Hewith Metro, Fallon Metro, walk 
car, free parking, free cafe, all that type of stuff. Uh, we are here now, um, and we've got the wor- the workshops now, which run. Um, yeah, the, the workshops that which run uh, every single week now, uh, Tuesday, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. Tuesdays are, are for the youngsters, uh, wow. the teen actors, and the Wednesdays, Thursdays are for the actor, uh, the adult actors. And we're workshop material now, ready for new uh, film projects that we're going to be doing over the next couple of months. Yeah, it's good. It's, it, it felt good this week, Rod. Uh, and you might appreciate this to actually be able to pick up the camera again and start shooting again. Uh, it's just, it it's, felt great. It's so good that the industry is finally getting back mm. up and going. When, the filming I did down in Southampton was the, the first big film set I'd been back on since I think the first week of March was the, the last, the last bit of filming I got before, yeah. uh, before lockdown happened. And in between that, all I've been doing, I've been doing a, li- a few little lockdown self videos and things yeah. lots of auditions Bits. some voiceover work so to get back on a proper film set was just bloody awesome yeah it does feel good to get mm-hmm. back it does i'm trying to queue stuff up there uh, that we shot last year <laughs> uh, i've been trying to do it for yeah ages. you owe me uh, that footage i do uh <laughs> well, i thought well you're here tonight so i can i can dump that onto a usb or whatever uh but i, I was thinking uh yeah let's let's do some more more and stuff and, and show some of the stuff because we haven't even done the new show reel yet uh for for northeast films yet but uh i'm working on it i'm working on it 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 is happening um you would have thought i'd be able to do it over lockdown but uh that didn't happen but anyway um well i've got a nice little role coming up this week okay okay Okay. i'm gonna be a judge i can see you as a judge he is actually you should go and get the attire on yeah you're very (laughs) judge like go and try it i'll put the gown the get well the gown that we've got uh it's a dress isn't it it is yeah yeah (laughs) yeah. but there's a wig in there but i'm not not gonna go on no but but we're gonna be getting the the good we're gonna be hopefully getting the proper red judges uh, gown sexy proper wig and Mm, i've got the, the glasses and everything uh which mine but i'm gonna give them over as props anyway so i mean i can go and quickly throw that uh, that thing on if you want yeah hey we've okay, got nine right, minutes okay. go for it <laughs> go for it we, we got time they won't, they won't be able to see time. it on the radio though will they no they won't be able to see it but they can see it on youtube and facebook on 8k live yeah, they exactly. can they can see that sorry ed what, what did you want my oh, no no hold on, hold on. all right okay you wanted to tell me something off air you can mime it if you want yeah didn't even get that <laughs> are we finishing at 12 o'clock yeah Okay, uh, 10 more minutes left of the oh, show yeah, on the radio. Yeah, uh, yeah, but I'll tell you, I'm on, I'm on radio. I've got to work here. I thought it was at five o'clock. So oh, you're at work, at work at five in the morning. Oh, yeah, right. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah we'll wrap at 12. It's cool. It's cool. Okay, so let's uh, a <laughs> bit, bit of tempo while we're working things up. That's cool. Um, okay, well, look, uh, the big, big show, 10 minutes left of the show. Um, now we are giving away Rod Glenn's book. Um, it, it needs to be sorted out. Um, there we go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. You, now somebody has to win it, so you have got to call the show now. Oh one nine one six four six four triple five. Let's get you live on the air as well tonight and uh, see if you can win this book. Otherwise, you're going to have to give it away next week if we run out of time. Uh, so there we go. Away. Can't even give it away. Uh, it was our <laughs> fault because I think we had a couple of callers um, tonight, but you know, couldn't tell. Oh, here he is. He's here now. Look, is Terry with his his gown he on? He's here. He, he does. He he's does got the, he's actually. got the glasses as well. Look at this. You look like yeah. Judge Rinder. Judge yeah. Rinder. Yes. You need what your you? hammer. That's well, what it is. He needs need his gabble. <laughs> where's my gabble? He says. Where's my gabble? <laughs> Give me my gabble. Uh, but yeah, you got the hammer as well, haven't you? The gabble. Yeah, the gabble. You don't come into my courtroom and call it a hammer. It's a gabble. <laughs> It is. Oh, he's, he's have, fully in character now. Yeah. Is, have you got the line ready that you're going to do in the in the music yeah, video? Yes. Uh, obviously, you won't hear it. Yeah. Uh, I gave it to you. You need it. Didn't you? Sentenced to death. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. not that sort of case. Yeah. No, it's going to be along the lines of um, you, you, I don't want you don't use children as weapons. Yeah, you don't sort of, in this sort of environment. Yeah. So my judgment is for the plaintiff. And then I don't want to see either of you in my courtroom again. <laughs> yeah, you need to be there. So, out. Yeah. Out. Get out. Like a, little we, of, uh, <laughs> a little bit of history of pizza. Yeah. 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 Where we've, 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 uh, yeah. It's, it's very we've, relatable, the music video, by the way. We, we've had a bit of a laugh. Yeah. We, we, when yeah. this this little bit came, the costume came through, we've been like, having a bit of a laugh on with, through the week because Shane was um, you know, doing things, coming over. But obviously, when I got the gear on, I was trying to say to him, don't talk to me in this end here like that and get out or you'll be sentenced. 
25 <laughs> years and out you go get out oh, of yeah, my room now. your full method yeah, yeah full method live <laughs> live in it live, live, in, the dr- live, live in the dream in that's what it is live in the dream uh, now, I have managed to locate some uh, scenes. Yeah, I have. Oh. Uh, so we might be able to, uh, throw one of them. Or, 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 well, well, we'll be lucky if we can. Uh, we've got six minutes left of the show. Uh, okay, so I'm going to do uh, – I'll do a quick scene. Should we do a quick scene from Marlins? Do a quick scene. Um, go on, go on. Do or, a quick, quick. Or, or you can have the, uh, you can have the, the, the teaser. A scene or a teaser? Do a scene. Do a scene. Or teaser. Do okay, scene. scene. Uh, okay, let's go for <laughs> – actually, we'll go for your scene, actually. I've got this. Um, it's a rough cut, I think. But uh, let's see if it oh, – now – See playing it, I don't know where it's gone. It's playing on one of the screens. Oh. Uh, we've got multiple screens. Oh, it's playing on the screen over there. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's uh, helpful. <laughs> can, I drag, can I drag it over here? Um, well, it's playing there. I wonder if I hold on a second. I might be able to pull it from. Give me a second. Bear with, bear with. Um, I don't think you guys can see this. Uh, uh, I'll see if people at home might be able to see it. Hold on a second. Tweaky, tweaky DD. I've got to add another. Tweaky, tweaky. Yeah, bear with me. Screens. Okay, I've got... What is that? What make and monitor is that? Samsung. I'll say it's one of them. Double look, see if that <laughs> worked. Oh, yes, it did work. Okay, so I've got it working. Okay. You might be able to talk through this. I haven't got the audio, but uh, you can be able to see it. Uh, this is exactly when you get out of the... Um, you're in the... Here we go. This was the first scene I shot. Great, 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 we're going to show the gunshot scene where I shoot down oh, in the you, foot. You know what it is? <laughs> I, I, I'd love to show that. Let me see if I can get that up one sec because uh, we're still kind of archiving some of this stuff. Like, well, it's going to be difficult because it's playing on another monitor. It makes it really difficult. One sec. Let's see if I can get it here. A few more minutes left of the show. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, which one was it again? It was the oh, it was the opener, wasn't it? The opening, the opening scene. scene, yeah. Um, My big yeah, reveal. Which, it was the big reveal. I don't think I've got that here on this drive. Uh, what I will show is this. Actually, here's, here's a scene. Let's have a look. NCA. Have a look at this the NCA headquarters. So this was a scene that we did. There's a little bit of Morelands. There's loads more that we shot, but uh, you have to see it. Little teaser. Yeah, a little teaser. Teaser into it. We'll get some more on the show reel. Uh, but look, uh, I've got to do this because uh, it is coming to the end of the show tonight. Oh, that's gone so quick again. I know it has. Four hours. It just disappeared. Go? I know. Can you imagine what we were like when we did the 101 hours? <laughs> well, you were stinking yeah. by the end of it. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I did. I, I literally had a quick shower on one of the on one of the days, halfway through or whatever it was. But it was my Terry did a few hours as well, didn't you, oh, Terry? I've done quite a lot of hours. I know I didn't do the 101, but what a lot of people don't realise is that yeah. when it when it was in the night time, when probably a lot of them had gone to bed and all that, they didn't see see you know me through the day. What happens from about eight o'clock at night? I stayed on until eight or nine in the morning so i went yeah. right through the night with them mm. and that's when a lot of people see me and then i'd go to bed for a couple of hours then i was back on watching the show again and i was either ringing in or skyping in mm. and if i wasn't doing that i was making burgers and then 
running them up to Mortworth for them. Yeah, so. and the, the burgers were lush, like, by yeah. the way. When you're <laughs> famished and you're being in those sort of hours, the burgers were nice. And they were lovely burgers. Um, as well. But if you want to check ones. any of the 101 hours out, you can. You can go to Facebook, 8K Live, uh, or, or on YouTube as well. You can see all what we got up to. Uh, we had a good laugh. There were there were real tears. It was, it was really tough. It was good fun, though. Uh, but we are coming on to the end of the show this Sunday evening. We have to say it. I know. It's, so, it's gone mm. so quick again. Mm. Again, really, really the week quick. goes quick as well. When, and then before you know it, we're back I here know. again. So it's exactly really weird. So we'll catch you next Sunday. Hopefully you've uh, had a good one. Um, check all the reruns and all the other stuff you can do uh, during the week. Uh, go check out the website, uh, thebigbigshow.co.uk. And don't forget, uh, don't forget, give us some love on 8K Live as well. And 8K Studios. Go go and have a look at 8K Studios and give us some love there. From uh, from me, Ferson, and Terry here, uh, and our guests tonight, still got Eddie and uh, Rod Glenn on the sofa. A very, very good evening to you. And uh, have a great week, whatever you're up yes, to. Uh, be good week. and, uh, you know, be positive and uh, help others. That's my word for tonight, mates. Help uh, others. And tune in next <laughs> Have a lovely, lovely week. Well done, guys. Thank you very Woo! much. We'll see you next week. Uh, take it easy. Lots of love. See you later. Bye-bye. <laughs>